because that's like there's like 10 people who watches us on YouTube, Anna. Good. I, I want to Good. Make well, those 10 good. people, this is for you. This is for you and not the people yeah. listening on Apple podcast or on the other thing on the Stitcher, Stitcher or the other thing and the other no, thing. This is not for you. This is for the people who take the time to go to YouTube and log the minutes. Bless your bones. You, you just reminded me of something I want to talk about. But first, I want before okay. I talk about that, I want to talk about goals. Right. Okay. Remember at the beginning of the year, I said this year, I'm going to talk about you know, I, I, every year I do a lot of New Year's resolutions because they're kind of fun. And I might be the only guy that I know that actually sees them all the way through. I know Anna sees hers all the way through. Uh, Anna is kind of like me with a vagina, if you're new to this. <laughs> I like uh, how you said vagina. <laughs> vagina. Um, vagina. So, you know, I whenever I set a goal, it's like, okay, I'm going to see it through, right? So there's always a lot of goals. So I don't just go, I'm going to lose 20 pounds, or I'm going to run a marathon. I, I try to make some meaning behind it. Um, one of my goals was to build something with my hands I chose. And I've always wanted to work with wood. Um, because I love the movie must love dogs, but I've loved wood for longer than that. And he's building, he's building rowboats in that movie out of cedar and, and fine wood. And it's like, boy, you know, I've watched that movie a couple of times. Well, because you know, you know, Diane Lane is hot. And uh, but these boats are beautiful. And you know, it's this romanticized notion that we're going to always do something one day. So I started working with um, one of the finest boat builders in the world. He he's loaning me not only his shop, but his expertise, Joey shot over at Turning Point Boat Works. As a matter of fact, he doesn't just do wooden boats. The guy will make you boats out of Kevlar, some of the, the finest boats in the Ooh. world. As a matter of fact, my friend, um, Dave, the kayaker, Dave Dolak, bought up a different boat company. And Dave is selling boats that Joey is making in that shop. Um, oh, cool. They're called West Side Boats. You go check that out. Look up Dave Dolak for West Side Boats. They're probably some of the fastest kayaks like people are racing in boats that are now 30 years old because no one's come up with a faster boat than this West Side boat. Dave Dolak owns that company. They're building these boats one off. It's, it's amazing what these guys are pulling off. So if you guys want boats, there you go. But I, I'm learning how to build a boat. I saw your picture recently. It looked cool. That boat looks smooth. I love the like, I know you have to finish it and stuff, but the wood looked super cool. I think that when I'm on the, the, the lake or the river or wherever I go, I'm going to get all the ladies with that mm -hmm. boat. Oh, like yeah. all the chicks with the thong back bikinis and everything. Mm -hmm. Who are out there also oh, yeah. rowing boats. You would think that they would want to be out there with the guys with the big motorboats and everything, but I think oh, no. uh, I think they'd want some of this. Those guys it's, didn't build their own motorboats. Yeah, it's like, come on. Yeah, I built my, my paddle boat. Come on, yeah. ladies. Yeah. So that's one of my goals. Um, another one, I had some with the rowing machine. One goal has already been reached. I had to get to, I was only at a quarter of a million miles uh, meters on my rowing machine for the year, which means I didn't spend a lot of time on it. I wanted to get to a million meters before May because that's when Concept 2 starts their new year. Right. I pulled that goal off, but there was a second goal on the Concept 2. I also needed to get by December 31st, another million meters. Right. So I didn't want to get to a goal and then go, okay, I got that goal done by May. Now what I'm going to do for the rest of the year, got to get another million, which means I got to get approximately 11 and a half, 12,000 meters a month in. Right. On the boat to hit another million. Right. So you'll do it. Um, I, I said 11, no, 100 and it's over 100,000 meters a month. So Yeah, I was going to say, 11,000 meters doesn't sound no, like that much. 100,000 no, meters sounds like 100, that much. No, it's, it's yeah. more like um, it's 110 or 120,000. We'll get me there yeah. by the end of the year. Right, so I'm on that roll now. Yeah, good job. So it. that's going on. Um, and then there was and still is the goal of I have to do at least... 365 hours of aerobics this year. Now, now doesn't the concept two stuff count as that? 
It does. So that's okay. part of There's it. There's crossover. There's crossover. But, you know, I, I can, you know, I, I didn't even think about it. But, you know, it, you know, whenever I go hiking in the mountains or whenever I get on my spinner or whenever I go for a jog or whatever, I look at my watch, I, I put the little timer on, and then I go. And then I, you know, I measure, keep everything measured. Concept two measures for you. I have a thing on my spinner, it measures. But right now, we're on day 143 of the year. And I'm at 174 hours and 40 minutes. Wow. So I'm ahead of schedule. Yeah. By 30 some odd, about 31, 31 hours. <clears throat> but you know, there's travel. And I travel yeah. a lot by car. Mm -hmm. right? There's whole days when I won't get those miles in. You know, you get sick. You know, right. I have to go to the hospital and, and, and get Guam taken off. There were several days I couldn't, I wasn't allowed to exercise by right. a medical guy. Right. So, but you figure all that in to where you are. Right. So I'm telling you guys that because it's important. It's important to keep your goals going in the right direction. Yeah. Right? I'd you say just, revisit them right now. If you have, if you're like, Oh crap, I haven't looked at my goals since new year's probably right. time to take a look. See what you can get done. Now I want to talk about an a-hole. Oh, is it is it Dave Asprey? Because I'm I'm furious with Dave Asprey right now. Furious. Oh, let you know what? Let me warm you up with my a hole. Oh boy. And then you can. Okay. I'll just let you rock and roll. You're really mad with Dave Asprey. I'm furious with Dave Asprey because you know I'm not a big fan. I'll probably <laughs> no. I'll, 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 you tell your story, and then I'll describe why I'm furious with Dave Asprey. Debbie found the lost first episode. Oh, that's right. And you and, listened to it. Well, no, she put it up. And everyone was going, oh, my God, this is so cool. It's good to hear the first episode of you and Anna together. We didn't really know each other. Anna and I had met a couple of times through a friend. I went over to get her started on a training program. And we just didn't really know each other. We walked into her, her studio and just plunked on the mics and started talking that day. And that first day was last Friday's show. Right? Right. And everybody started, oh, my God, it's so good. It's so good. It's so good. Is and it? I was like. I mean, I bet it's interesting, but is it so good? I think I mean, it's, it's like. I'm not going to go back and listen, so I have to take saying, more. They're saying that it was, we're still on message, even after all this time. Oh, yeah. And I mean, that's cool, but it's also okay if in 10 years your message evolves. That's okay, too. I'll, I'll, you know what I mean? Like, you've always been a voice of reason, but like right. Tim Noakes had to rip the nutrition section out of his first, the running book. Sure. Uh, was his The Lore of Running? Was that his? L lore of Running, yeah. Okay. I don't know. But that's cool. I like that, and that makes me happy. But also, too, I'll never go back and listen. <laughs> so I take your word for it. Well, as you know, Anna and I never listened to the shows. I, I... I've rarely done sound checks. Usually I went back and listened to a segment where someone was accusing me of something I didn't say. Where uh, someone might have been a fruitarian and challenging you to a foot race. Yeah, the fruitarian episode was actually, I didn't even listen to that one either. I just knew it in my gut that it made me uncomfortable. I went I actually fast forwarded to the end of that when they hear the part where he started challenging me to a foot race. I was trying to figure out. I, I listened to pieces and parts of that one, because I was trying to figure out what I said that set him off. Because right. at some point, he was just set off. And yeah, that was that. He, yeah. And Anna and I it was the first time I was driving home and Anna called me and she said, what just happened? <laughs> and I was like, Anna, I, I've never thought about a podcast after I've walked away from the mic. But I don't know what just happened. Right. I, um, and I, when that podcast came out, I listened, you know, I kept fast forwarding because I was trying to figure out where it went off the rails. And as it turns out, we didn't do anything to ignite this guy the way he was ignited. We were trying to give him the benefit of the doubt as much as we could. And we couldn't. We, we were trying to give him the benefit of the doubt in light of 
hearing some pretty crazy facts. I don't want to rehash the whole thing because I don't want to distract from what you're about to say. And of course, maybe well, let me just let me just say this. But, All right. Yeah. He, the reason I got the guy on was because he was on Sanjay Gupta's show. And this is when Sanjay Gupta was thinking about putting his hat in the ring to become the Surgeon General for the United States. And before he lived under the desk at CNN, he would go out and do like interviews of people out on the, you know, on the beat. Right. And He'd leave the office. Right. And he had this guy, he goes, we have this fruitarian on, he's an ultra runner. And the guy was a pretty accomplished ultra runner. He had done some pretty good he races. And, yeah. and he goes, and the Chiron that ran underneath the thing that said, it said something like um, this guy, I can't remember the guy's name now. He Michael he, Arnstein. Michael Arnstein, go look him up. He's been arrested several times since. Um, <laughs> for fraud, by the way. Um, Not related to being a fruitarian. Right and trying to bribe a judge, but okay. Um, or something to that measure. Um, at any rate, it said Michael Arnstein eats uh, either 20 or 25 pounds of vegetation. It was 25 pounds of vegetation a day. Per day. Mm -hmm. And I thought about it because I've owned a couple of horses. Michael Lawrenstein looked like he weighed about 140 pounds soaking wet. My horses, on average, weighed 14, 1,500 pounds. And I went, you know what? I seem to remember that a horse eats somewhere between 17 and 20 pounds of food per day. How can grasses I, and yeah, when you add up grass and everything else? Yeah. It just, if you notice, they're walking all day long. They're eating and crapping at the same time. Right. You know, yeah. horses just, they graze, right? And they, they just eat constantly. And at the end of the day, they got 20 pounds of grass in them. That's just the way it works. And if you give them some, some hay and you give them some sweet feed or whatever you give them, some oats, it comes to 20 pounds. And um, I said, you know, obviously this was a mistake. So I wanted to get Michael Lorenstein on the show. And we did. And I said, Mike, look, you know, because I, I felt like we were, you know, kindred spirits. He's an ultra person. I was an ultra person. You know, we're doing this kind of thing. I said, Mike, it said on the thing that you eat 25 pounds of vegetation a day. And um, I'm going to assume that that was a misprint. And he goes, well, yeah, it was. And I went, ah, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Mm -hmm. What what should it, for it? I, I was waiting for him to say is 2.5 pounds of vegetation a day. Right. Which I would have thought was way more than a lot of vegetation. He said, yeah, I eat closer to 50 pounds, five zero pounds of yeah, vegetation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Anna and I, that's when we used to sit across from each other. And we we're like looking at each other going, uh, I remember I was like, you mean like, because when you weigh the food and like when you peel the orange, you throw that part away, you don't eat that part. So yeah, like if you're eating a watermelon, you're throwing the rind away, you know, well, because that. like that's what I thought when he said 25 pounds, like, well, it must be because you, he's counting like when you weigh it at the grocery store before you take it home and prep it. That's got to be it. Right. Right. No, you throw out the butt of the romaine. You throw out the rind of the thing. You throw out the peel. So nope. we're, still, we're still trying to be as nice and as cordial as we can. I started saying, look, a horse has to graze all day to get to 20. You must be eating around the clock. And he goes, no, not really. You know, he was very sensible about it. And said, not really, not really. And he kept mentioning, he goes, look, I don't have a horse in the race. He goes, I, I don't care. People could do this. They cannot do it. I don't care. I'm just saying what I do and I'm winning races. And I'm like, well, I guess you are. And, and um, I said, Mike, what do you do for a living? Because I needed to find out you, you can't really have a job and just eat this much. No one can eat this much food in a day. My but job. he would said he would load up his backpack and run to work. Well, and then he, he would said, load up the fridge at work with more oranges. Right. A and lot of oranges. That's all I remember. They, and they, romaine they, lettuce. They, well, I think he said something about his wife and they, they, they had a special fridge at work. 
You have, yeah, you have to. You just have to. Right, and they would like they would ferry food in there enough for him for the whole. He bought a lot of of like pallets of oranges at Costco and stuff like that. Right, and he would, and then he would carry some in his backpack as he ran to work every day. That was part. And he would juice a lot too. He would juice a lot of oranges. I remember that. He he was doing a lot. He was doing the liquid sugar. A lot of blender, you know, this kind of thing. And I just remember we were just fascinated with it. And we weren't goofing on the guy. I was no, just, no, no. I was trying to get the logistics of, I guess the, I, I did kind of make a joke. I said, are you like a horse? Do you eat and crap at the same time? I, because think about it, folks, go try to eat two and a half pounds of it. Go try to eat five pounds. That's 10% of what he's eating. <laughs> this is that's a lot. Your right. tum-tums will have something to say. Yeah. 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 And this guy is saying, yeah, I'm doing this every day, every day. And he kept reiterating, this is just me. I have no horse in a race. I have no, no ties to anything. And then, but at some point he just went off the rails. Yeah. And there was no getting him back. Right. Well, he got, he got mad when you brought up his, his fruitarian camp, but honestly, we, we should, we rehashed this recently. Y'all should go back and listen to the episode where we go blow by blow on this whole thing because or just go back and listen to the episode. Because now that Debbie put the first episode up, people are interested in listening to the old episodes. We got Tanerexic Mom. We got Nutella Mom. We have all the old interviews that are super cool. All we right, have, so, all right, we so have that, Vagina Blackface. Remember that? Yeah. <laughs> we have Racist yeah. Paula Dean. Racist Paula Dean. It, all, so all of a sudden, Debbie starts putting the shows in the right place. And somehow Lipson, my, my, my Twitter is hooked to Lipson. And it started dropping all of these tweets. Oh, that's when I texted you because yeah, you some of the admins me. were worried yeah. that your account was that hacked. Been hacked. Acting weird. Yeah, yeah. It was my thing that was connected to Lips. Thank and that you, was, Kurt, for pointing that out. That was dropping all of these. And some guy writes and he goes, oh, yeah. Uh, just so happens that every episode you, you're putting up happens to be behind the paywall. Paywall? Paywall? Hey, well, Anna, you know, as well as anyone else, we leave the top 50 shows free. Right. And that's the fifth. And when the next show comes in, one drops off because right. we keep adding one. And we've been doing that from the beginning because at 2100 and something shows, you cannot, you, you got to put them behind a pay. You, you have to. Yeah. You can't. Also, leave. everybody does that. There's no like, I don't think, the, I don't see why you even have with, to explain that. And by the way, if you wanted to buy a month of, of this, what is it like two or three bucks or something like that? I if you know, buy the whole cheap, year, it's yeah. 25. That's not exactly a fucking paywall. That's like a, a pay picket. It's, fence. It's, a, it's a few bucks to cover the bandwidth that we have to pay to. Yeah. It's not like I'm loading my pockets up with this money. And I, when mother, whatever ever, money bags, whenever mother ever, Oh, Oh, look at paywall paywall. Oh yeah. Fuck you. <laughs> Fuck you. I'm sick of it, Anna. I'm just sick. I'm, I'm sick because all I do is give away shit for free. That's you true. give away stuff for free. Yep. I just, I, you know what? I thought my summer was all booked. I, I'm doing all this stuff. I'm going everywhere. As you know, I gave my booth back at KetoCon. So Same. basically I'm doing that for free. You're yep. doing it for free. You yep. know? Well, we not for free. Stuff. We have to pay a lot of money to get there. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So, you know, we do all of the stuff, right? We put ourselves out there and we put ourselves out there and we put ourselves out there and then we get this back. This is where we get back. Right. And, and this is what bothers me. It makes me want to just say, you know, go fuck yourself. It just, go, yeah. just you know, it, it really, really drives me nuts. And today, right before this, right before we came on, I just signed on for another free speech. Just so happens there's two counties over in Virginia. And I said, you know what? This That's not too bad. Any extra proceeds, you know, we, we charge for this and it, we, we give it to the kids, to the school to do stand up desk. And I went, you know what? I, I got to go. Do this. Yeah, you got to do I, it. I, I we're drive an hour and a half. I got to go do it. I got to. We do all of this stuff. Right. And then we got to listen to this jackass. And by the way, what's wrong with making a living? Nothing. When did that become when when did you become no. the enemy of the state by making a living? Vinny, you know, people have a lot of hang ups about money. And whenever you're in the quote unquote business of helping people and, and the irony being that like we're trying to help people who are recovering from 
being completely hogwashed by the diet industry. Right. So, right. It, you know, yes, we have to charge a few bucks for our products and we have to charge a few bucks for back episodes and, and um, my books cost money. But you know what? You can go get hundreds of recipes for free at Substack or at my site. Yeah. And um, that's, you know, I have to strike the balance because I have to I have to make a living. I, you know, it's people complain about the food blogs, you know, because if you go to a food like let's say you Google, I want a recipe for grilled chicken. Right. So you Google grilled chicken and all the top results come and you click on all of them and you can't even get to the recipe, right? Because they're so loaded with pop-ups and ads and you have to scroll all the way through and you think it's the life story of the person writing thing. It's actually not. It's intentional SEO language right. so that they come up on that first page because all of those ads and pop-ups, that's how they make their money. That's how the food bloggers make their money. I was always really irritated with that too, but I chose to not do that on my food blog and on my Substack. So I know my Substack does have a paywall for um, premium subscribers if you want to go there. And thank you, premium subscribers, but it's five bucks a month. So I chose not to do that because I'm like, I'm going to make my money on the back end of selling books. Because so hopefully if you like my recipes, you'll spring for a book, you know, yeah. which I don't think is for me, books are one of the most important things in my life that have changed my life. So I assume that you guys think that way too, and that a book can change your life and it's worth the money. And, um, and it is interesting because people do give kickback on it, but I'm like, Listen, those food bloggers are making ten, twenty, thirty thousand dollars a month between ads and being on the first page of Google. Right. I'm choosing to not do that because I want my user experience to be more streamlined. That's more important to me. I want you guys to have a good experience and not feel like you're just constantly being sold to. You know what I'm saying? And can I say I remember the first year we, we went to uh, this thing in Vegas. It was like the first two or three years, and oh, the the expo, the uh, what was it called? Yeah, New Media it, Expo. It was yeah, and we were up for some podcast of the year or something like That's that. Right. And um, and we were talking to some people there, and one person was saying, "Oh yeah, you know." I come up with recipes and this is before Anna did any book or anything. Right. Yeah. I was and, just starting to think I could write a book and putting together my recipes. Yeah. And this woman and Anna, I'll never forget. We we're sitting there and, and Anna stop me when I'm wrong. I'm going to paraphrase. And you were like, Oh, are you a chef? And she was like, no, I'm not. Um, my boyfriend, it does a thing. And it was like, well, where do you get to, how do you come up with the recipes? She literally said that she just takes other people's recipes off of line. She puts them together, stacks them up, makes a thing, puts a nice bow around them and re and she sells them as her own recipes. Am I making so, that up? No, no, that's absolutely true. The one detail is that the legal loop is if you, you could change it from like a quarter teaspoon of salt to a half teaspoon of salt, then you're right. it's legally like a new recipe. And then you change how you word the instructions like by a few words. And then now it's legally your recipe. And that to me, I was floored. I was like, yeah, what? this woman, you know, first of all, I could never ever do that. That's just horrible morally. Yeah. Like that would like, I don't know. I'm always a do unto others kind of gal. So it's like when you hear someone like, what? And then also too, I'm like, I just wouldn't trust that those recipes even work because the number of times I've had bad recipes, and also this is being on the inside of the food industry, there are certain very, very famous, mega rich, multi, multi millionaire names who write recipes. Well, they don't write them, but their people write them and they never test them. They just write them down and then send them out and they don't work. And then because they just assume that the user error. And by the way, if you listen to my interview with Trisha Clark at my Substack, who's a food producer, she, I didn't even bring this up. She goes, oh, it's like really known, like, because they all go, oh, well, it's just because the user error, they're so dumb. Yeah. Users are dumb. So they're, they're never going to, who cares? Just put out, put out your content. And I was like, oh, I can't, I can't do right. that. Yeah, but you see, that, that's the problem. We have a conscious, most people don't. Um, and well, that's that why I will never be super rich, but as long as I'm making a right. living, and I got my, my note paid and I can grow my company. What's most important to me is that I can grow Eat Happy Kitchen as much as I can, because to me, it's more important to be able to change my little corner of the supply chain and make some food that people can trust in the grocery store right. or online. You know what I mean? Like, and I know you're doing the same thing with the vitamins and with the coffee and with the ultra fat. And it's just, that's where you just change your focus. And speaking of trusting food, shall we talk about Dave Asprey? Yeah, let's go right into it because we're running out of time already. And now here's the thing. I know. And here's the thing. I'm going to tell you something. I had I had the evidence here and I washed it out and I left it on my desk, but my cleaning lady threw it out and rightfully so because it's a hunk of junk. 
but I wanted to show it, but then she threw it out. So I had to Google the image of the product. <clears throat> so I had to go get a thyroid scan down in Camarillo. So it's about an hour and 15 minute drive. Right. I stop in Oxnard on the way back to ch charge the car halfway, just make sure I can get back over the pass. And I run into the little Whole Foods there. And I'm like, this is fun because I don't live near a Whole Foods anymore. So I can get some fun things like they have the Castellarano olives ready to go. And I'm going to get snacks. I'm going to get the Gusto um, salami. I'm going to get a little bit of cheese. And this is going to be great. And so I got those things and put them in my basket. And I go over. I'm like, I need a coffee. It's time for my coffee. And I don't have anything with me. And I go to the, like, you know how they have the end cap now of the cold brews? Oh, I didn't know they did that, but yeah, okay. Well, they have them in a lot of grocery stores now, I'm noticing, because I guess in the beverage industry, those cold, cold brews are hugely popular, and there's a million of them, and they all have oat milk or a latte or a sugar or a something, and I'm just looking for a cold can of plain coffee. Right. That's all I want, right? And I don't have my glasses, my reading glasses with me, and so I look, and I see one that says zero grams of sugar, it is that's big on the front. And right. then I look and I go, oh, it's a bulletproof. Okay, so it has an MCT. So I know it's Dave well, no, Ashbury. Hang on. Dave Ashbury doesn't own bulletproof anymore. Well, I guess I'm not mad at Dave Ashbury. I'm mad at random company. Whoever that bought whoever bought, but but you know, Dave Ashbury has started a new company called Danger Coffee. But continue on with your story. I didn't mean to well, ruin I bet story. you anything, his formula is probably still the same. Okay. Um, yeah, so, but I, I got a lot to say about Dave Asbury because he, he's a huckster, but go on. So I go and I pick up this can and I look at it and it says bulletproof cold brew latte, but it only has grass fed butter and MCT oil. I'm like, okay, cool. I can do that. And it has, uh, of course it has the bullshit keto friendly, but I know not, not to pay attention to that. And it says zero grams of sugar and it doesn't say anything else on it. To be fair, I don't have these little reading glasses on and I don't flip it around and I don't read the ingredients. Right. So I think I'm just having, and it looked plain, like it looked like it was a plain, whereas the other ones had like flavors or whatever. So I was like, this is good. This will just be the coffee, right. MCT oil and butter. Good. Great. I'm good to go. Which was Dave's original bulletproof coffee blend right. that, that, that well, he might put some vanilla powder or some and if it had that vanilla powder that's fine that's not sugar i could i could have that and i get in the car to head back on my hour and a half drive home back over the pass and i'm so excited to have my snacks one of my favorite things to do is to have snacks in the car from the grocery store mm -hmm. i love it and so i'm opening my thing my salami and my olives and i'm getting it all set up and then i start to drive and then I'm like, oh, time to crack open my cold brew coffee. Yeah. I need it so bad. It's been a long day. I need some caffeine. You I, were hurting. I, I was hurting. I needed it. Note to self, always make a little iced coffee of my favorite double French from Pure Coffee Club and bring it with me, which it looks like is what you're drinking right now. With, I'm actually having the honey process right now, but go on with my ice cubes. So then if it melts, it doesn't water down. I don't know why I didn't plan ahead. I'm a bozo. I'm in the car. I'm at least, you know, 20 minutes along the road on the 101. Crack open that cold brew. It smells a little weird. I have a very strong sense of smell. I smelled it almost right away. Hold it up and I just take a slug and I almost spit it out all over the dashboard. Yeah. It tastes like the most cloying saccharine, sweet, disgusting. Like it doesn't even taste like coffee. It tastes right. like if, if like Halo Top and um, NutraSweet and Starbucks had a disgusting little baby. Yeah. And sure enough, I flip it around. I'm doing this thing, trying to read it, hold it away from myself, read it and drive the car. Driving all over the freeway. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm monk fruit and stevia and uh, uh, or erythritol or whatever. And then I immediately am like, oh, no, I hope I don't get an upset stomach on the way home. I didn't. I was OK, but it could have gone the other way. I never know with my stomach. I never know what's going to happen. Why? Why set it off? Why like light a match? You know what I mean? Right. And I was just so furious. So then like a half an hour later, I'm in the middle of the past, you know, because I have to go up a mountain pass to get home. Yeah. 
I'm up the mountain pass and I was like, oh, maybe my taste buds were wrong. You tried it again. I did. What's wrong? With so you? stupid. Come on. It it's was so better. It was so disgusting. And I was so upset. And I was up, up until this, this moment was furious with Dave Asprey. Yeah. Also, the, it costs like like six dollars for like one tiny can. And I was like, if and, and, and by the way, I have no problem paying six dollars. I've I've spent more money on less, but I want it to be something I can crazy. consume. It's crazy that they're charging that for that kind of thing. It's my fault. It's I admit it. It is my fault. I did not read the ingredients. I should have known that I was going to get horn swaggled by Dave Asprey's ex company. Yeah, should have known. Um, and I, I got it. Look, Dave Asprey, for anyone who doesn't know, Dave Asprey made a lot of money in the tech industry. You know, he's one of those um, early on Silicon Valley guys that did really well. Right. And, uh, you know, as these guys do, they, they sell, they, they sell out of these companies. They, they get these crazy, crazy checks, right? Just crazy valuation. And they're like, yeah, they, they had a hundred million dollar exit. <clears throat> and then they have, they wind up clearing like hundreds of millions of dollars. Yeah. Yeah. And so Dave is one of those guys, super smart guy. And my understanding of it is Dave, wanted to prove that it kind of like a P.T. Barnum type, kind of like the guy who started Dianetics. Um, what was his name? Um, oh, not L. Ron Hubbard. L, yeah, L. Ron Hubbard. No, he's Scientology. Yeah, Scientology. Oh, that's Dianetics. That's right. That's, that's right. Dianetics. So <clears throat> L. Ron Hubbard. Bar, it was basically a bar bet. <clears throat> yeah. And I don't know how this happened with Dave, but I've heard through pretty reliable sources. He said, look, if you have a lot of money and you can create a story, you can sell anything. And it was kind of one of those things. He goes, I'm going to go into the, the health field. I'm going to go into this field and watch. I, I'm just going to create something and, you know, and do this. And he came up, you know, if you remember the story, you could probably still find it online somewhere. It, it was written out somewhere, but Dave was talking about, you know, he was hiking through the Himalayas, you know, Himalayas, and he was doing all this stuff. And uh, okay. he he Are ran short, he ran short on his fuel. And I'm paraphrasing the crap out of the story now. But he ran short on fuel and he was bonking. And he just tripped into this, this little village. And he was out of gas. And he was basically on his hands and knees. And this woman takes her into his hut and says, and he's laying there almost passed out and she's got something on the stove and she pours some of this magic elixir and says, drink this and you'll be fine. And he drinks it. And all of a sudden within 10 minutes, all of his energy is back. He drinks another one and he's able to walk the rest of the day through the Himalayas and he's fine. You know, I'm just, I'm really paraphrasing and he couldn't believe the amount of energy. So he went back and asked the lady, what was this magic elixir? And she said it was yak milk and yak fat or something to that you know, degree. But like in tea or something or like? Yeah, in a tea. Oh, okay. Yeah, they put it in a tea. And so Dave figured out, he did the math and figured out, oh, Yak fat has a lot of medium chain triglycerides, just like mm -hmm. coconut oil. And, you know, yak butter is the same as our cow butter. So if you mix the two together and instead of tea, you can put it in coffee. We'll call it, it makes you feel bulletproof. And we'll call it bulletproof coffee. And that's how Dave, yeah. Okay. That's the story I heard of how Dave. I don't mind a bulletproof coffee. I'm into You're it. Right. Yeah. And people have asked me, is bullet and, and let me be very clear here. People go, are you okay with bulletproof coffee? Yes. But what people started doing with me with, you know, they're going, okay, I'm doing NSNG. So whenever I'm on the consult with them, they'll go, yeah, you know, I, I haven't broken away. I'm still in dietary ketosis, but I'm not losing weight anymore. I still have 75 pounds to lose. I've only lost a hundred. I got 75 more going. And they'll say, I wake up in the morning, I have a bulletproof coffee, and I'll have bacon and eggs. And then 
about mid morning, I might have another bulletproof coffee. Well, if you're taking in so much, much fat that mm -hmm. you're never getting to your subcutaneous fat, you're not you know, you can stall weight loss that way. It happens a lot with people when they they drink, they'll go Yeah, you know, the woman with the heavy cream, Gabrielle, you might remember way back yep. the story I used to tell about Gabrielle and she was just having so much heavy cream that she wasn't losing weight anymore. She wasn't gaining weight, still had a lot of energy. But she was living off of literally drinking several ounces of this stuff, along with her regular meals. If you're out somewhere, if you're in the middle of a, a, a race, or you're in the middle of a mountain or somewhere, and you wanted some bulletproof coffee, you wanted some MCT oil, along with fat, well, that's or you can take an ultra fat, which is pretty close. And I know what you're saying, well, fuck, we can't get that stuff. We're, <laughs> we're back, we're catching up again. By this Friday, you may have gotten your stuff. Um, Ooh, I can't so, wait. I'm behind. I want mine. Anna, I haven't had my own product now. And we I know. I, I, know. I, I told them, I said, do not send me one packet to the house. No, if, no, no, no. If, no if, you gotta, if, you the if the customers can't get it, I can't get it. And that's yeah. just the way I look at it. And we are catching up. We now have two lines running and we've hired more people. I I never thought in there was a world where I can have a product that was this good and this popular. And everyone so I talk good. to the consults, they go, Oh man, the, the nut bottles, the nut bottles. Well then yeah. can I I'm can I be mad at you then? Because I don't have my ultra fat, so the whole thing blew up. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yeah. Everyone else. No, it's that. listen, it's fine. And it's just a reminder of having to read your labels and don't take anything for granted that you think you know the shot when you don't know the shot. Like just yeah. read your stuff. And and again, you know, there needs to be competition in the marketplace. There needs to be stuff, but you just have to be educated as a consumer. I'm not, I, you know, I don't blame Dave Asprey for starting his company and selling it. Everyone. Oh, me, me either. Um, but you know, that's what but happens. Like, when but that's what happens. Company. So, um, yeah. Okay, so Before we get into the next thing, uh, Villa Capelli, folks, Villa Capelli makes the best olive oil on the planet. So good. Um, and let me tell you how much I believe in the stuff, y you know, most, not everything, but a lot of the, the oils here in the United States, they they put a lot of seed oil in it. And as you know, at purevitaminclub.com, yes, we're catching up there too. Um, at purevitaminclub.com, I refuse to put any other type of oil in there because you never know what kind of seed oil you're going to get with your vitamin D3. You have to hook it to an oil, right? And uh, Paul Capelli was still alive back then and called up Paul and Stephen and said, Hey, hey, listen, guys, here's the deal. Um, can you ship me some barrels of this? I need to put this in my product. And they said, Yes, we can. We that's how much I believe in Villa Capelli. It's in my vitamin D3 over at purevitaminclub.com. Bottom line. So you can go check that out at purevitaminclub.com. But before you go there, you want to taste this stuff and you want to taste it off and go to Villa Capelli. And when you get to check out, put in promo code Vinny, V I N N I E, you get, um, uh, you'll get 10% off. But here's I'm gonna, another I'm going to see what they're doing, there. because sometimes they're sold out of things. Because yeah, they're very popular. Um, yeah, I'm checking well, it right now. I tell people if you can afford to spend about $115, even after the discount, mm -hmm. you'll be over 100 and you'll get free shipping. And that's no short. Um, th that's a real deal. Is what here's I mean. the thing. Go on. They're, they're sold out of the smaller bottle, the 750 milliliter bottle, which is about the size of a wine bottle. Yeah. They do have the three liter tin. And I'm going to tell you guys, this is actually doing you a favor. Just get the three liter tin and then add on one of their salts or spices. Use the discount code Vinny so that you get the, the discount and then keep it over $100 after the free shipping, like Vinny just said. And I'm telling you, just get the three liter tin. I, here's the other thing. It's so funny because I go to the grocery store all the time and I just will never buy. As long as Villa Capelli is in business, I will never buy a grocery store olive oil ever. Ever, ever, ever. And I pay full price, you guys. They, Stephen doesn't like to send it to me. So, yeah, I mean, I, I do use the discount here. code we, Vinny. But. Yeah, we all pay full price, you know. And I do the same thing. I put my promo code in. I am not proud. No. I am not proud. I love you, Stephen, but I'm using the promo code. Yeah, Stephen. We're, we're, um, we're, we have 14 minutes left. And I was thinking, should we do the calorie bank question for Monday? Because it's a long thing. Uh, in, I wonder if or do you want to just 
because you had one more thing I think on your list that you want to talk about, right? What, what, what was that? I don't know. I don't know. I don't, I don't know your list. I don't know. I don't know your list. Oh, let's do it. Let's do it. Let me ask the question and you can give your Vinny description answer because I think it's such a good question. Ted Dore asks on Twitter, Dore, Ted Dore, I'm not sure. He says, maybe a dumb question, but is there any equivalence between carbs and exercise with regard to weight control? Like if I have 15 carbs too many in a day, will some amount of cardio cancel out that excess intake? I think it's a great question, Ted. It, there's no simple answer to this question. Um, so it's it, yes and no. Yeah, the, yeah. The, there's no yes or no to this to this question. So let's say you're trying to. I'm just going to make up stuff. Let's say you're trying to keep your carbs under 50 grams, right? And I get it. But you're saying it, it's to stay in dietary. You're trying to keep your carbs at whatever number works for you to right, that you stay right. in dietary. See, I, I know that I can keep mine right at or below 50 grams because of all of the aerobics I mentioned earlier. You know, my body's always trying to pick up. And, and you know, you can pick up all all the you know sugar you need, blood sugar you need from protein. I certainly eat enough meat. But I can stay at 50 grams a day and stay in dietary ketosis, no problem. I generally stay somewhere at 30, 35 grams a day, if I'm being honest. Can I say something here? Oh, if you're, if yeah. you're, I feel like Atkins had the induction period, but it's supposed to be your first two weeks to get you into dietary ketosis at right. 20 grams. Right. And I feel like now people just shoot for 20 grams for their entire life. Right. They, they do. And people get, they get carb phobic and I don't want people right. to get carb phobic here. And that's why I'm, I'm, I'm using my numbers. I'm telling you guys what I do and what I can get away with. Uh, if you do a consult with me, a lot of people notice that while I'm doing the consults, I'm walking. I don't even count that as my aerobics, by the way. Right. right. I'm always moving. Uh, I, I do my own yard work. I chop my own wood. I do a lot of things that I don't count as my aerobic activity. Right. I'm, I'm a very active physical guy. And um, I can probably I, I can have over 50 or over but if you're trying to stay to a number, right, and you're fat adapted. So that's the key. If you're brand new at this, I would tell you, eh, don't mess around with it because we want to get you stabilized. We don't want your body to keep releasing insulin and everything else. I don't have any of those problems. I, I was never metabolically broken, nor will I ever be. So my, my body spins like a top. And a lot of people's bodies spin like a top and yours can too, eventually. And I don't know where that person is. But you know, early on, when we started doing this show, a lot of people started talking about backloading carbs and front loading carbs. And never understood those. I, you've explained it to me a million times, and I still don't understand it. Does that mean before and after workouts? Yeah, it's like, well, if you Why don't you just up, say before and after workouts? Well, yeah, like loading, because people and they love to use fancy words like bolus, you know, like, you know, you bolus, <laughs> you know, a shot. No, I don't know what it's that means. Pre preparing a shot to give it to someone later, they bolus their food now is it's bullshit that that fucking idiots what? do. Yeah, that sounds so dumb. I have a well, or the other thing is like when they're talking about we're, the refeed period, I'm like, I at first I was like, what's a what's a refeed? It's eating. It's we eating. Just say eating. eating. Just refeed. say eating. Yeah. But you see, when, when when you're an idiot, when you're a bro science guy on the internet, you want to use refeed bolus. Coddington and I just laugh about this stuff all the time. Uh, hey, see, I'm an idiot. So and I know I'm an idiot. So when I see stuff, I go, Oh, it must be something that's like, uh, really complicated, because I, I always default to the fact that I'm an idiot. It's all it's all bullshit. Then you're like, wait, it's just eating Then just say the word eating like, t just use the simplest word. Yes. Thank you. But yes, but no, no one does that. Okay. And so yeah, if you're taking in 15 extra carbs in any given day, um, it won't matter as much. If you just did two hours on a bicycle or something like that. It, it just won't. You know, it's all just paper in a in a fireplace and it just burns up. Or if you had an extra 15 carbs before you did that. But if you're doing it intentionally, it, it won't really matter. Right? right? You know, so I wouldn't I wouldn't sit around and worry about that too much. But 
if you're sitting there going, Ooh, wait, if what he's saying about 15 extra grams of carb means that, well, hell, I can have a yeah. whole pizza because I'm going on a five hour bike ride. No, you're going to start once you get to a certain level, and your body's releasing cortisol and and, uh, and insulin and everything else, you're going to get more inflammation, your body, your ghrelin and leptin is going to start shooting off the charts. And you're going to start getting resistant to all of that stuff. There is no free lunch, folks. But if you're going over by 10 or 15 grams of carbs here and there, and you're going on a bike ride or a run or whatever, it's just not going to matter. But see, here's what I like about your message. You preach a level of sanity that I've not heard in other places, which which is is, because I'm not very sane. (laughs) But there's a level of almost a false premise in his question in that why is he counting in the first place? If you are doing NSNG and you're eating when you're hungry and you stop eating when you're full and you've cut out sugars and grains, I would, I would wonder if Ted or everybody else who asks this question, which by the way, we've all thought this, oh, well, if I spend that extra 30 minutes on the trip, remember my friend Pat who's like, I spend the extra 30 minutes on the treadmill, I can have an extra glass of wine. Like right. we all have that diet mentality of like that it's a bank as opposed right. to we're a much more complicated hormonal furnace. You it's, know? Not a, it's not so much a bank as it is a bank account where money's flowing in and out all day. Fat is flowing right. out of your fat cells and you know, um, and, and so I just wonder if he's trying to game the system a little bit. No, like, I hey, think, if I, I do the cardio, I, I'm, not, I, I, I'm not blaming. I'm just saying, like, is that a thing that we do as human nature? Like, oh, I did extra cardio, so I should be allowed to have that extra little thing of pizza. And even though I'm doing NSNG most of the time, couldn't I have 15? Oh, let's say it's not even a pizza. Let's say it is an NSNG food that's higher in carb, like a sweet potato or right. like a, you know what I mean? This, those things that we do to try to, like, I, I, I would I would be willing to bet that this was a conversation between he and a friend. And it was like, I wonder if you could blah, blah, blah. And then yeah, how does that work? it sounds like he was having a conversation. He goes, hey, let me just tweet to Vinny. That's what it sounds like. Yeah, it's more of one of those than out of I, I, I would I would be willing to bet that he wasn't sitting around going, I wonder if I can game the system. I'll bet it was just just this crazy existential oh. conversation of I wonder what if you did this, if that would happen. Oh, I, I, I actually know. I, I maybe. And also, if you're new to this, it's really hard to peel back the onions of the belief systems that go. Wait a minute. So you're saying all I have to do is cut out sugars and grains and move my body? I don't believe that. I think that if I can cut back an extra this, and you know, I think it's all part of the thing that we all go through, and it's all fine. It could be, but you see, that's the way your brain works. You got to, you know, <laughs> I know. Well, well, it used to, it doesn't anymore because now I understand. Yeah. Yeah. How it works. You know, you've gotten out of the, the diet mentality and we, you know, we, so, someone was saying the only thing on that first show, you, you, know, you said at one point, well, what if I have a banana or something? I went, yeah, yeah it's, it's okay. And they said, well, why did you tell her it was okay? And now you would tell someone not to have a banana. I said, because I didn't know Anna and she was my co- well, and also I wasn't metabolically broken. She wasn't. Yeah. And like I if, like, if I had all these d- diseases, then you would have been like, don't have the banana. But you so you have to think too who you're talking to. Right. That's and, why the consults matter. I didn't go that far in the podcast to listen to why I said you can have a banana. I just heard like the first 15 or 20 minutes. And I went, wow, we, we kind of had this kismet thing going on. Awesome. And, and by the way, I was coming from the mentality where a banana was a health food. So I would force myself to put a banana in a smoothie because I thought that was the healthy thing to do at the time. And when I started thinking about it more and more, I was like, hold on. I never have to eat another banana again. Yeah. Hallelujah. You know what I mean? Like for me, that was good news. You want me to tell you some really, really good news? Yeah. Eat happy, eat happy cookbooks, eat happy kitchen. Dot com. That's good news right there. That is good news. That is That's good what news. I'm talking about. Folks, do not. And by the way, most people, when they call me, they'll go, we have Anna's books. We have Anna's sauce. We have Anna's. Now I'm here. We, we, we have Anna's powder. You must be running through that powder pretty fast. because We uh, are. We are. She's selling more powder than Bogota at this point. <laughs> yeah. But I, I mean, you could snort it. You won't get high, though. You'll just I have did, and I sneezed a lot. Yeah, you're going to sneeze a lot. Yeah, I, I rolled up a $100 bill, and I got down on some of that. But you I, know what I did do? I took the bacon grease, yeah. 
Yeah. And I rolled the cup in it, you know, the, the edge of the cup. And then I rolled that in the barbecue dust and then made a nice uh, Bloody Mary drink. You bitch. I need to try mm-hmm. that. I need to with the so you have the sauce and you could put the spicy in there. Did you get your spicy in the mail, by the way? No, not yet. Okay, it might have come today. There. I've been in the sauce there tomorrow. Oh. It should be there. Um, yeah. Um, thank you. I can't wait to try that, folks. Go check out everything that Anna Vocino, Anna Vocino is doing. Whatever, whatever her not name. Not Anna Vocino. She's I tied to Tino. Yeah. Go check out everything she's doing with me, um, folks. You know what to do. We all go shopping on Amazon. Before you go to Amazon. Please go to VinnyTortoris.com, click through the banner, it puts coal on the fire and it gets my train down the track. And we we're able to keep the show free. We also have the the uh, super fan page. I check it every morning, I see your names and I do a little secret thank you to each person because without you, I could not keep this show free. So thank you guys. for.